you guys. Hey. Hi, everyone. I'm Chief Lee Burkhoff. Thank you all for joining us today. Joining me today are Major David Arthur of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, Tampa Police Officers Dan Spears and Craig Baker, our Marine Patrol, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers Blaine Gabbert. We often say that we cannot do our jobs well without the help of the community and that we are safer together. Yesterday was an amazing example of how teamwork, not only in the sports world, but also in our hometown. And that's why this area is known as Champa Bay. As you know, yesterday afternoon, we responded to a report of a helicopter that went into the water near Peter O'Knight Airport. Today, you'll hear from those directly involved in the rescue. Our Marine Patrol arrived as they observed three of the occupants, which had already been rescued from the water by Blaine Gabert and his brothers, and were being taken in by jet ski to the coast. Officer Spears and Baker helped the pilot out of the water and into our boat, bringing him back to the coastline as well. Our local partners from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, the Florida Fish and Wildlife, and the U.S. Coast Guard also responded for assistance and to help secure the helicopter. The FAA and the NTSB will conduct the full investigation, but I'm so proud of the work of everyone involved in this situation. As I said, teamwork is commendable. So first I'd like to introduce Major David Arthur of HESO. Major. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Sheriff's Office Marine Unit was ready and proud to offer whatever assistance was needed. We're very thankful that everyone made it out of this uninjured. And although we're two different agencies, we serve one community. The Sheriff's Office is proud to partner with our Tampa Police Department brothers. The Sheriff's Office is committed to providing all the resources needed to serve our community. Our Marine Unit was ready, staffed, and equipped to respond at a moment's notice. And to our citizen hero, thank you. Great job, sir. Now, I would like to introduce Officer Spears to provide you with their perspective of what went into the actual rescue. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Officer Dan Spears, Tampa Police Marine Unit, my partner, Craig Baker. Uh, we were at our marina uh, late afternoon yesterday, uh, just on standby. We had already conducted our own water patrol for the day, and we received a call from dispatch that an aircraft had gone down, specifically a helicopter. The location was south of Davis Island, somewhere in the water, and uh, we were the first units to uh, respond from our location. Uh, we arrived on the scene, and Blake and his brothers had actually uh, just about completed the rescue. Uh, it was a pretty impressive uh, feat, no doubt. Uh, very, they were very calm. Great job on that. Uh, we were able to get the uh, pilot out. He was the last one in the water. Uh, it was just an amazing event. Uh, negative circumstances that turned positive. One of the most dangerous uh, circumstances on aircraft is uh, a water landing uh, just due to the... Uh, inversion of a helicopter and uh, trying to escape that and not get trapped in. So it was a very amazing circumstance that everybody got out. Uh, I do have something for Blake. We actually have our unit coin for the brain unit. So actually, uh, I think we're going to adopt you on the brain unit. Appreciate Great job, you, you and your brothers. Thank you. And then that's all you. Thanks. What's up, guys? Um, so the story, as I remember it, we were just on the jet skis yesterday afternoon. It was me, my middle brother Tyler, and my younger brother Brett. And they just got in town yesterday from St. Louis. So I was like, all right, let's go poke around a little bit. It's a warm December afternoon. So we left our house, kind of went around the south side of Davis Island, and I wanted to show Brett the yacht club just to see all the sailboats and whatnot. So we kind of poked around in there, and I vaguely remember hearing a faint noise. And so we turned around, left the yacht club, and I just remember looking to the west and seeing it almost looked like a crew boat in the water that had broken up into about four pieces. And I vaguely remember seeing like two yellow life jackets. So I was like, all right, we got to go check this out. They looked like they were in duress. We raced over there. The youngest kid had just came up and said he was pinned in there. And I asked if anybody else was trapped. And then I called 911, tried to remain as calm as possible. But no, it all turned positive. They were healthy, scared, nervous. But, you know, it was just... It was a pretty crappy situation that turned good in the end. So I was just right place, right time, I guess. Um, the credit really goes out to Tampa PD, you guys, 
the fire department, the sheriff's department, because they were there within five seconds. It was pretty remarkable. And we got them. I got two on my jet ski. My brother's got one. The pilot was still in the water. And that was when you guys pulled up. Um, and I dragged him a little bit towards the, the boat, and he got on. And luckily enough, we were probably 250 meters from the beach. So we got him to the beach. Um, the fire department was there. Everybody was there. And, you know, the rest is, rest is history. But um, it wasn't me. It was just my brothers and I out having fun. And the credit goes to these guys, because if they weren't there in the nick of time, it could have turned bad. Um, and I'm glad everybody's healthy. Sir, do you spend a lot of time, first of all, do you spend a lot of time on the water? And is part of being on the water always being ready for a Yeah, you always, the water and Mother Nature, it, she's undefeated. Um, if you don't treat the ocean with the utmost respect um, in the air in a boat, um, she'll always come back to bite you. So um, you always got to be responsible, always got to be hyper aware. Um, and just kind of got to know what's going on. And fortunately, I've been on the water for 30 years of my life. And I wouldn't say I'm the most experienced guy on the water, but I'm pretty well experienced in it. So, um, you know, I'm just glad they all made it out alive. What, what is your message or, you know, words to the people who are okay right now? I was just trying to do the right thing, help them out. Clearly, they were in, in need. And, you know, I'm happy they all made it out alive. I think they were in the th there was a pilot in the family, it was mom and dad and their son who was probably my age. Um, and the parents were in their 60s and she was visibly shaken up. And the kid who was my age was probably the most shaken up. I mean, they were covered in oil. It was not a fun sight. But um, no, I was happy I made it out alive. Well, you know, apparently, by, by their accounts, she clung to you on, on the ride. Yeah. Just what, what was that like, just knowing that, that you could be their hero? And well, we had three people on the jet ski. and. I'm heavy, they were waterlogged, so I was like, all right, we got to hold on. So I tried to go fast to get on plane, and I was like, man, I'm like, you have to hold on or you're going to get flown off again. So, you know, she grabbed on tight. I was like, just please hold on tight. We'll get to the beach quick and get you dried off, get you a coffee and warmed up. Once you guys were all safe, did you exchange any words? Not really. Um, I honestly wanted to stay anonymous. I just thought I was doing the right thing at the right time. Um, I'm not much of a guy to be in the limelight. I just kind of want to stay under the radar. But... Uh, I just said, thankfully, you guys are okay, and I'm glad I was there. Could you process as it's happened? I mean, obviously, you say you, you want to do the right thing in there, but could you process what you were stepping into or what you were encountering? There? I was expecting the worst case scenario once I pulled up and realized it was a helicopter. Um, the two of them looked like they were functioning. I think two had life jackets. Uh, they weren't inflated, so I remember telling them, you got to pull the ripcord to to get the jacket going so you can float. And I tried to get them on the jet skis as fast as I could just to get them out of the water because they were, I mean, it was pretty chilly yesterday in the water. So you don't want to have them in there for too long. But, um, you know, it's funny how time kind of slows down in those situations. And I just tried to stay calm, do exactly what I'd want somebody to do if I was in that situation. So um, it all turned out positive, And at the end, I just tried to do the right thing. Have you attended water safety courses in the past? And you said you've been on the No, I mean. I'd like to say I'm a pretty good swimmer, but that's the extent of it. <laughs> your teammates know today you get grief from your teammates about this? Oh, I, you can't even imagine. <laughs> Thanks to Nelson, my name is now out there, so uh, I got grief first thing in the morning from Jensen, and the list goes on and on. Cam Bray's a big instigator. <laughs> Blaine, this, this doesn't matter much in the grand scheme. Did they know you? Did they? No, and it was awesome. I didn't tell anybody my name, and at the end we had, I mean, of course you have to give your information, sure. contact information and whatnot, and I got a text from Jason, I mean, within 30 or 45 minutes, I was like, did you just save people from a helicopter crash? I was like, yeah, How, how'd you hear about it so that fast? Um, but no, I just, I was doing the right thing. You guys would do the exact same thing that I did. I just happened to be in that situation, um, and thankfully, like I said before, it all turned out positive. Don't know if all of us would have been as cool and calm under pressure. Yeah, I got to hear the 911 call because I don't, I think I remained calm and didn't curse too much, but uh, I'm sure you guys could find that. It's definitely recorded. Um, but no, I thought I, I remained calm and just tried to do the right thing. And I understand that, that there was one person that had trouble, I guess, getting out. Was he out by the time you got there? It looked like he had just got up. Uh, he was struggling. He didn't have a life jacket on. He said he was pinned, I think, in the cabin. I didn't know if the chopper had inverted in the water or whatnot, but uh, he was pretty stressed, to say the least. Um, so I just wanted to get them 
dry and warm as quickly as possible. Have you had any time to reflect on just like to put things in perspective? Of yeah, we were sitting around the fire pit last night with some of the hockey guys after their game. And we were just kind of talking about it. And it's like it's just funny how it happened. It's, you, know, you never know when these situations are going to pop up, but um, it's safe to say like I could hang my head on that we did the right thing, and that's all that matters. You told us about the phone call with Jason. What was the phone call like with that guy? Um, she didn't know until I got back to the house because I wasn't on my phone. I looked at my phone when I got back to the house and we pulled in to the dock and she's like, where were you guys? And I was like, you'll never believe this Thursday afternoon. I was like, there's a helicopter crash. She's like, what? But no, it's, it all worked out in the end. Well, Blaine, before we uh, take any more questions, all the work that you did out there, there's no reason why we don't make you an honorary member of our Marine Patrol, and I have a Thank you. token hat for you. Appreciate that. And of course, I'm an avid Bucks fan, so I have my hat as well. I love it. I'm going to just think fit it on. Thank you. Tight. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, sir. Appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Good to go. Any, Any other questions? questions? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate you. Congratulations. Appreciate it.